Hello, my name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So lately I have been binge watching a genre of YouTube video, which is something that I am want to do pretty often. And right now I am so fixated on the most anticipated books of 2018 videos. I don't really know why, because as I have said many, many times, I am a huge mood reader. I don't really usually plan reading that much, uh, other than like organizing the books that I have and whatnot. But like, in terms of like, on this day, I will read this book. And on this day, I will read that book, not so much my thing. But watching all of these videos and reading some of the lists that have come out have made me really excited about 2018. And like, trying to plan a little bit. So I thought we might do an experiment today. That being, I have a list of I think 34 books, and I'm going to try to get through these pretty quick. So don't worry. I thought that I would record this now. And then at the end of the year, maybe we'll check back in and see like, by actually like noting the existence of these upcoming books that sound good to me, did that impact me actually reading them? Or was that just like a thing that I logged away for future reference? I don't know. So I think that this might be sort of an interesting like test case of how much of a mood reader I am, or if I can influence my mood by doing a little bit of planning. So anyway, I've got 34 books to get through. So let's let's get into things. Okay, in January, a few of these have already come out, you will notice that for most of the most anticipated books of 2018 videos, these tend to be more front of the year heavy because we have release dates for more of those. So mine is the same way I have mostly books in the first half of the year. But Anyway, I digress. So in January, we have In the Shadow of Agatha Christie, Classic Fiction by Forgotten Female Writers 1850 to 1917 by Leslie Klinger. That came out on the 2nd of January. I mean, Agatha Christie connection, pretty obvious why that kind of caught my eye. Another one that I think will already be out by the time you're seeing this is The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujita Massey. And this is a book that has been on so many people's lists. I think it's some sort of like, mystery detection action happening in India. And it just is getting so much hype that I'm intrigued by it. Then we have when the scientific secrets of perfect timing by Daniel H. Pink that comes out on the 9th of January. Again, I think that probably will be out by the time this goes up. Yeah, I just think that that sounds interesting. This idea of can you scientifically figure out timing of things. And then on the 16th of January, we have Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. Now, I really like her Name of the Rose, Name of the Star. Yeah, that series, whatever that series is called. It kind of fell off a cliff for me a little bit, but I'm still hopeful it might be able to end well. I'm just intrigued by a new title from her. And then we have, this is the first one that I'm like genuinely like, yeah, I really want to read this. The Hazel Wood by Melissa Alber is out on January 30th. Now this is one again that is getting so much hype and I can totally see why. The premise I think basically is that there's a 17 year old girl and her mother and they're, they are going to a manor called the Hazel Wood, which is her grandmother's manor and her grandmother's passed away but her grandmother wrote like dark fairy tales and I think that the girl's mom like gets drawn into one of these dark fairy tales like she disappears and the girl has to find her it's getting like a very diverse group of people we're talking about being interested in this so that is part of what intrigues me it sounds like both the story itself and the writing quality is going to be quite good the next one is also one that I'm extremely excited for I've been excited for this for the last few months and that is this will be my undoing living at the intersection of black female and feminist in white America by Morgan Jenkins that also comes out on January 30th I really probably don't have to tell you much about why I'm excited about that or why I'm so excited about that it is all in the title so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. And then the last one for January is Brave by Rose McGowan also comes out on the 30th. And I'm intrigued by this one because Rose McGowan was actually a very early and very vocal critic of a lot of the stuff that the Harvey Weinstein scandal kind of stirred up. I think she was one of his first accusers, but she's been being vocal about these issues for a while. So I'm just I'm intrigued. Well, I, I'm not sure if I'll get to that one. But it's a celebrity memoir that I'm I'm interested in reading. Okay, now we're on to February. And I, I have six books for this and all six of these I'm really pretty excited about. So the first one is from Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. If you watch my channel you know that I really like Mariana Zapata. She's sort of like a go-to crack comfort read for me. She writes something contemporary books that I would say 
are somewhere between just like sort of general contemporary women's fiction and a romance. There's always a romantic element, but they um, they tend to have a lot of family dynamics and whatnot. So anyway, anytime Mariana Zapata has a new book, I'm excited about it. Then I have Feel Free by Zadie Smith. Now I've never actually read something from Zadie Smith, which I feel a little ashamed to say, but I, I mean, I've read a couple of like articles and stuff she's written and she's clearly so talented. I mean, it, I, she doesn't need my validation to know that she's talented. That is clearly the consensus of the community. But this is a, a book of essays actually um, about Brexit and a number of other things. And I thought that might be like a good way to get into Zadie Smith because I'm somebody who quite likes essays and having kind of those smaller essays to dig my teeth into, I think might be good because her books do tend to be quite long. So looking forward to that, that comes out on the 6th of February. Then we have The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross, which also comes out on the 6th of February. And this is a fantasy novel where the magic system just sounds really cool to me. So I guess you kind of go to school for a few years and then when you turn either 17 or 18 you have like this big test and the determination as to whether or not you've passed is whether or not you get a wealthy patron. And I think this is the story of a girl who studies and is it's kind of unclear what her special like special gifting is and she doesn't get chosen on that day but then like this mysterious like disgraced lord comes and chooses her later so anyway it just sounds like an interesting like an interesting world and i like fantasy so that that sounds good on the 20th we have one of my favorite writers marilyn uh marilyn robinson she writes i mean gilead is amazing and then i've really enjoyed the essays of hers that i have read and this is a new essay collection called what are we doing here so i'm quite looking forward to that the next one makes me a little sad it's called i'll be gone in the dark by michelle mcnamara that comes out on february 27th and she is the deceased wife of Patton Oswald, if you know who that is. And she's actually like a very, I guess, acclaimed kind of like true crime junkie. Um, and she apparently writes really beautifully. And I'm not sure if it's just because she passed away, but uh, there's a lot of uses of the word masterpiece being thrown around with regard to this book. And it's a true crime novel, true crime story. I never know quite what to call those, but it's uh, it's nonfiction. It was finished by her research partner, I believe after her untimely death. And I'm just, I like true crime and just the way that this is being talked about really intrigued me. And then lastly in February on the 27th as well, we have A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole I think is one of the most exciting kind of emerging voices in romance today. She writes uh, historical romance and she writes non-white historical romance. And I think that's something that we desperately need. So go Alyssa for that. But this is actually a contemporary and I think that it is something having to do with like an unknown betrothal like the girl finds out she's betrothed to some prince i don't know but it's diverse romance which i'm actively like trying to make sure that i'm conscious about seeking out it's by an author i already know i really like and so i'm definitely definitely excited to see this one as well okay i've got three in march the first of which is getting so much hype and i can see why because i don't actually know that much about it other than the premise and i was just like yes I will read you. And that is Children of the Blood and Bone by Tomi Edeyemi. And that comes out on March 6th. Basically the premise of this is it is YA fantasy that is an allegory for the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, that sounds awesome. The Just the cover, the, I mean, this is so superficial, but the cover is gorgeous. It is so beautiful. And yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to read this one. I think that this is gonna be one that it would be fun to read when it comes out because I think it's gonna be being widely read and that would be kind of fun to be a part of. The next one is Mad Blood Stirring by Damon Fairless, which also comes out on the 6th of March. And I'm intrigued by this because it's it's nonfiction. It's like narrative nonfiction or nonfiction about male violence and like what the origins of it are and like the biology and the sociology, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just thought that that was really intriguing. And then the last one in March is another one that I'm extremely excited about. It's called The Mary Spinster, Tales of Everyday Horror by Mallory Ortberg. It comes out on March 13th. And I love Mallory Ortberg like any good like woke millennial. I enjoyed The Toast, R.I.P. I really liked her first book, which I believe was, was called Texts from Jane Eyre. That was a fun one. And I think that the kind of descriptions of this, of like dark retellings of fairy tales with a feminist bent, makes me think of Angela Carter, who I 
effing love. You guys know how much I love Angela Carter. I think you do. Maybe I haven't talked enough about her on this channel. Okay, just so you know. I really love Angela Carter. She's fantastic. And so I'm excited to get something in that vein from somebody who I already like. Okay, the next one is one that I have literally been looking forward to since I think last summer, and it's finally coming out on April 13th. So we've moved into April at this point, and that is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. It is about, I believe, I'm sorry if I'm wrong about this, but if I'm remembering rightly, it is a former slave. This is set during like the Reconstruction era. A former slave who becomes a zombie killer like the cover of this is just amazing it's a girl like this badass girl with like a scythe like in like old timey lighting and oh it just looked like just that like the image of that plus the description i was like this sounds amazing this is another one that's getting a lot of hype so i'm excited and i, I hope i just i haven't even read this yet but i bet this would make an amazing movie so hopefully they're they're on that the next one is kind of similar to the zadie smith thing I mentioned earlier, and that is The Female Persuasion by Meg Wolitzer is coming out on the 3rd of April. This is another one where I have never read Meg Wolitzer and have always felt like I should. <laughs> like so many people whose book tastes I respect and like can trust in terms of like mirroring mine, love her. And this is just getting a lot of hype. It's also, I think the premise does sound really interesting to me. I think it's sort of like a disillusionment story of somebody who is really admiring this figure who's sort of like a Gloria Steinem type figure and like kind of her road to like growing up, realizing you can't always put all of the faith in the people you admire. I don't know, it just, it sounds really interesting to me and it sounds like a good first book for me from an author I've been meaning to try. So that comes out on the third. Also on the third is Voices from the Rust Belt by Anne Trebek. And this is just a series of essays kind of from like what I guess I would probably call Trump's America and like what life is like there right now. So like Detroit, parts of Pennsylvania, Ohio, things like that. And yeah, I guess I'm just sort of Given our political moment, I am intrigued by that. And then finally on the 3rd of April, apparently that's gonna be a big day, is How to Be Safe by Tom McAllister. Now, my favorite, yeah, probably my favorite book podcast, and I do listen to a lot of them, is Book Fight. I just find those guys funny. They're, they're not always as, I don't know, I, don't, I won't even get into that. I, they are very funny. I really enjoy a lot of their content and I do think that they tend to have some good recommendations. And this is actually the book, I think it's like the, I'm not sure if this is the novel debut. I guess it probably would be his novel debut because he has had a memoir pub published previously, but um, Tom McAllister is one of the co-hosts of that podcast. And so I'm really excited to read this. It's about, I believe, a school shooting and a teacher who's wrongly accused of it. And the description essentially says that it's like a darkly comedi comedic feminist story. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I know I already think you're funny. So this is probably going to be a book I'll really like. So How to Be Safe by Tom McAllister. I'm really looking forward to that one on the third. And then we have two more for April. So I've got Sharp, The Women Who Made an Art of Having an Opinion by Michelle Dean, which I think is sort of like a dissection of like Hannah Arendt, Susan Sontag, uh, Joan Didion, people like that, like cultural critics of the 20th century and sort of like what gave them the ability to do that well. So I thought that sounded intriguing. And then God Save Texas by Lawrence Wright is coming out on the 17th of April. Now Lawrence Wright is a really powerful, I think, narrative nonfiction writer. And he has done, I mean, his past work is fantastic. I highly recommend his book on Scientology. I think that that's a really like, a very good kind of starting place if you're intrigued by Scientology. I went down like, a rabbit hole, like I've been on a rabbit hole, who am I even lying? I find that whole subject fascinating for like the last like eight years I've been like watching it. And I think that he did knowing, I do know quite a bit about that topic and then reading his book kind of like validated his work to me, not that he needs my validation, but anyway, do you know what I mean? Like when you read nonfiction about something you know about and you're like, you, yes, you actually understand what's going on with this topic. That's how I felt about that. So I'd like to read something else from him. And this is essentially, I think, a, a study as to why Texas is so Texas-y. If you are not an American, you may not totally understand why that is an interesting subject slash a thing. But Texas, Texas is a special snowflake. It's its own special thing. 
and we'll just leave it at that. God Save Texas by Lawrence Wright is coming out on the 17th, so I'm intrigued to try that. Okay guys, we're rounding the bend here. So first we've got four from the month of May that is coming out. First of all, we have Not That Bad, Dispatches from Rape Culture, edited by Roxanne Gay. If you watch my channel, you know that Hunger was far and away my favorite book of last year. I just, I love Roxanne Gay based on that book. So topic that I'm super excited about, editor that I'm super excited about, I'm there. Excited for that, that comes out on the 1st of May. Then the next one is You'll, You Think It, I'll Say It by Curtis Stittenfeld, and that comes out on May 3rd. This is another Meg Walzer, Zadie Smith situation of, I've always wanted to try something from Curtis Sittenfeld and, and nothing ever totally like clicked for me to try, but this is a collection of short stories and I love short stories. So I think this might be a good place to start with her. Then we've got Magic Triumphs by Alona Andrews. Guys, guys. This is the book I'm most excited about this year. Like bar none, this is the one I'm most excited about. That comes out on May 8th. I'm gonna be, be doing a massive reread and a big like, reviewing every book in the lead up to that. So like, cannot wait for it. Oh, so excited. This is the last book in the series. So like, I'm gonna pregame for this hard. Anyway, moving on. Then we also have Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston on May 8th. Now Zora Neale Hurston is no longer with us, I believe, but this is a extant work that they are publishing. And I was so intrigued by it because I, it's essentially her, it's like a nonfiction account of her interviewing the last known person who had lived as a slave. So I just think that that sounds fascinating. So there you go. And I've got four for you guys in June. The first being me and pretty much every person on the planet will be reading The Outsider by Stephen King. Stephen King is, you know, just the, the energizer bunny. He's just the writer that keeps on going and we keep on lapping it up. This one I believe is about a boy who's abducted or missing and the like, you know, pillar of the community who's apparently suspected of being involved. That comes out on June 5th. I think that sounds nice and suspenseful. Then we have Sex in the City and Us by Jennifer Kirsten Armstrong that comes out on June 5th. And this is just a cultural analysis of Sex in the City and its impact on, on pop culture. I love that kind of thing. I think Sex in the City is a fascinating kind of test case to do that type of analysis on. So looking forward to that. And then probably my second most anticipated book of 2018 is Ocean Light by Nalini Singh that comes out on June 12th. That is another one that is just like, I love that series. I'm excited to, uh, to, to get the next installment in it. So, and I'm hoping, I'm assuming that means we're gonna find out more about the whole like ocean pack that's having, what is that called? I think it's called Black Sea. I'm a couple books behind. I, have to catch up before this book comes out. But I would love to learn more about what's happening with that group. So that'll be really interesting. And then finally in June is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand. That comes out in, on June 26th. And this is the author who, um, I believe it was this year, released My Lady Jane. And it's YA, and I think that they're just like doing various Janes, <laughs> like well-known Janes and doing like a retelling. And this one is about Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is my favorite book of all time, therefore I find this very intriguing. I'm also excited that's YA because, you know, expose the youngins to uh, to Jane Eyre as soon as possible, I say. Okay, and then we've got four more that kind of cap out the year, but like I said, all of these lists tend to be pretty front loaded because we don't know all the books that are coming out in the second half of the year or else people are not allowed to talk about it that much yet. So first is The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas that comes out on July 31st. I can't quite tell if this is YA or not, but basically the premise of this is, is that there was something terrible that happened to a town's um, group of cheerleaders a few years before. The last victim was the protagonist's older sister and she apparently finds something in her stepfather's desk that makes her think that it's not over and maybe he was involved. So I just, that sounds like my kind of suspense or thrillery thing. So looking forward to that. The next one is sort of like an optimistic looking forward to this book. And that is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab comes out on September 25th. I have actually not read Vicious yet. I own it and I have not yet read it, but assuming that I read it and love it, this is the sequel. So I will look forward to reading that. Then I have, the last two I have are both nonfiction. So the first is Let It Bang, A Young Black Man's Reluctant Odyssey into Gun Culture by R.R.G. 
RJ Young that comes out on October 23rd. I understand that RJ Young has a very like engaging, I think uh, YouTube, maybe it was podcast, but I think it's like a YouTube channel. So I'll have to check that out. But I just thought that was a really interesting kind of take on a like, um, the genre of memoir where people try things because like the whole association with guns and how they are, are emblematic in white culture. Anyway, I just thought that that sounds like a really interesting and like smart project. So that's intriguing to me. And then finally, we have News Wars by Jill Abramson that comes out sometime at the end of the year. Jill Abramson, if you don't know, was fired, I think somewhat controversially from the New York Times a few years ago. And this is going to be a nonfiction book about sort of like how we've gotten to the media landscape that we have today. And I think that combination of interesting author plus interesting subject matter is definitely intriguing to me. So that is 34 books that I'm looking forward to in 2018 for somebody who doesn't think of themselves as looking forward to books in the coming year. That's a pretty good list. If I had to give you some that I know that I'm going to get to, I obviously will get to Magic Triumphs by Alona Andrews. I will definitely get to From Lukoff with Love by Mariana Zapata. And I will definitely get to Ocean Light by Nalini Singh. Those are all either a new book from a beloved author or just a continuation in a series. So like, I know for sure I'm going to get to those. Of these 34, I highlighted, I'd say about 15 that I was most excited about. So I'm I'm gonna say, you know what? So I counted, there's there's actually 13 books on that list uh, that I highlighted as being especially excited about. Here is that list. Um, I am gonna say that, like, we'll see what happens, but like, let's, let's see if I can actually get to all 13 of those this year. That might be, let's just, at the end of the year, we'll check in and see if that actually happens, but like, I'm gonna try. So this is my contribution to the genre that I have been enjoying watching so much recently. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If any of these books sound particularly interesting to you, definitely let me know. Or if I alerted you to the presence of a book you didn't know about previously, I would love to know about that too. And then yeah, just let me know what your most anticipated books of 18 are because looking at the list, it seems like there's gonna be like, I feel like I feel that way at the beginning of every year, but especially this year, I'm like, ooh, there's like, there's a lot of things that I've been waiting for that are that are coming out. So I'm excited about that. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. All that information is listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you guys are having a really wonderful week and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!